Good afternoon and good to see you all. So, this afternoon, as well as last night, we had the I Am Congress at Christ Cathedral. Last night, it was a youth and young adult event, and this afternoon, it was for all the faithful of the diocese to come to experience the Eucharistic Lord, who said, I am who am in the burning bush, who know, we know and recognize as Christ the Lord, the one who has come to save us, the one who has given us life, and the one who continues to nourish this life with his very body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so we join our Mass today with the bishops that will be taking place at 5 p.m. this evening, where, as one faithful, one community of faith, we gather around the table of the Lord, seeking to find him, seeking to recognize him, seeking to know him, to experience him, and to encounter him in the sacraments. And so let us begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one. I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising 
in the setting of the sun. People may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with a Herodian saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. They handed him a Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Growing up, my mom always tried to instill in us the value of money. She would buy us whatever we wanted, but then she would give us a little bit something extra so that we could go and we can get whatever we wanted. I remember I would have the dollar, and I would look at the candy when we would go to the supermarket, and I would see that it said 89 cents. And so I took out that dollar, and I said, here you go. And then inevitably, they would say, oh, no, 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 it's a dollar and something cents. And I was like, what is this? This is ridiculous. What do you mean it's more than what it is? It says right here. In my head, I didn't understand what tax was. I was a young kid, and my mom was like, it's not a big deal. It's like, she would just end up paying for it anyway, because, of course, she was going to. But she had us understand this concept of money. So if we wanted something extra, we knew that it cost something. It came about from work. It wasn't just given. But then, of course, we understand the reality. If something really was like that, then we would expect it to be even more. Which, okay, living in a society now, you go, you see it, you pay the tax, you don't even think anything of it. You swipe your card, you give them the money, however it is that the transaction happens, right? But when we see in the context of the Roman Empire, when Jesus was there, The census tax was something extra. The tax collectors, some of them, crooked, would go about and say, well, Caesar is saying that it is 12 denarii. I'm going to charge 13 and take one off the top. Some of them would try to enrage the crowds and would say, it'll be 20 denarii. They would change the price because what they wanted And so already we see that amongst the Christians, they would have already had an apprehension to paying the tax because they never knew if it was a true tax or not. It was whoever was in charge, what they wanted to charge. And so we already see in the Gospels, they didn't have pure intentions. They didn't come to the Lord and were asking, are we going to be good citizens? Should we do this? But they were looking for a way to entrap him. If he says no, he is not a friend of Caesar. He deserves to die. If he says no, he is not a citizen of the Roman Empire who has conquered this nation. He deserves to die. If he says no, we have cause. We can bring him before Caesar's person that's there, the praetor, and say he does not want to follow what Caesar is asking of us. He deserves to die. Because they already recognize and they know that he is a good teacher, that he's one who follows the law and who is truthful. When we see in the gospel today, when they say, teacher, we know that you follow the law. We know that you are a truthful man and you do not care of status or you don't care of anyone's status. So tell us, like anybody, they're trying to pump him up a little bit. They're trying to say, we know that you are good. And because you're good, you're going to tell us the truth. Not just what we want to hear, but what we do want to hear. 
you want to tell us, no, it's not right for us to pay the tax. No, the tax should not be among the Israelite citizens. And then they would have reason and cause. And then if you were to say, yes, you need to pay the tax, well, then he's an unfaithful Jew. What do you mean we have to pay the tax to Caesar? He is not God. Why would we pay this? And so no matter how Jesus would have answered, he would have been trapped either way. Either he would have been a traitor to the Jewish people, or he would tell them, no, don't pay the tax, and he'd be a traitor of the Roman Empire. And so Jesus, who would have been entrapped if he would have said no or yes, he instead says, what's on the coin? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Let's take a step back. Let's talk about Caesar for a moment. Who is he? Obviously, he was the leader of the Roman Empire. He was the one who had went out and who had conquered nations. Caesar, who had went out and under the banner of the Roman Empire, had went out and conquered lands, regions, united people. Not for the glory of God, but for his own vain glory. I am Caesar and you will fear me. Under SPQR and under the Golden Eagle, if you were to rise up against me, against Rome, you will be crushed like all the other empires that I have. You will be like them. And so Caesar, when he's conquering the known world, it isn't for the greater glory of God. It's not because he's trying to enhance the betterment of all people, but instead he's trying to subjugate. He's trying to say, yes, under one banner we will be one but under my direction and under my rule. It's contrasted with Cyrus that we hear about in the first reading. Cyrus, a king who was not even a Jewish man. Cyrus, who was a Persian, outside of the law, who was separate from the law, who had nothing to gain by being kind to the Israelite people. And yet Cyrus the Great was known as a messiah a form of Messiah for the Jewish people because he led them out of persecution under the Babylonian Empire. Cyrus the Great, who would be great, who led the Israelite army, who led the people of Israel outside of slavery to the Babylonian Empire, who then conquered the Babylonian Empire, them free. You are free to practice your faith. You are free to follow your God no matter how you desire. You are free to worship him as he prescribes. I gain nothing by doing this except that you will be my brothers. You will experience the freedom to worship and to love your God. You will know him and you will understand him. I may not be like you, but I desire that you encounter this freedom. We see this very big difference between Cyrus and we see the difference between Caesar. Not to say that Caesar did not do incredible feats. We read about it in our history and we know that the Roman Empire did amazing good work. Some of it, if you think about it, from the aqueducts. The aqueduct systems were developed by some of the Roman Empire. Well, that digresses. We see the good work that can happen even under leaders that may not be great. But and yet, when we see that fullness of, I desire that you encounter this freedom to know, to love, to serve your God to the best of your ability, then you will flourish as a people. Then you will encounter all that the Lord has entrusted to you. And here in this message to the prophet, the Lord is reminding him that under Cyrus, under a person that was outside of the law, Remember, I am your God. I will not leave you abandoned or forsaken, but instead you will be made perfect. There is only one God, and it is me. There is only one Lord, and it is I. And I will guide you, and I will lead you. And so we see the very difference between Cyrus and Caesar. 
And so when the Lord, when he tells them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, he's telling them, this human government that you have, if this is what they are asking of you, give it to them. Why fight it? But the Lord says, what is God's belongs to God. This is the part of extreme importance. All of us at baptism had become the Lord's. We had become his beloved sons and daughters who are wanted, who are cherished, beloved, known, and desired from the beginning and the foundations of eternity. He wants us to be with him. He desires us so much that he offered his sons that we would have life eternal to be with him in heaven for eternity so that he might pour out his love on us all the more. Yes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. And what is it that God desires? All of us, our complete selves. At baptism, we receive this indelible mark. It's a mark that's placed upon our souls that is meant for him. They can never be erased, can never be washed out, can never be removed because he has placed it there. He has marked us for eternity. He has given us that grace of life eternal. And so give to God what is God's. He's not asking for a segmented part of our life. He's not asking for this one isolated piece that I am willing to offer to you because I'm afraid to offer you everything else. But instead, he wants us to offer us his, our entire life to him. That part that we are wounded. That part that we feel can never be healed. That part where we feel that we cannot bring the Lord's light into it because we might hurt the Lord if he were to see that part of us. But instead, God who has formed us, God, as we hear in the Psalms, knit us in our mother's womb, who has formed us, who has created us, who has nurtured our very inmost being, is the one who continues to give us this life and to sustain it. He wants us to give what is his back to him, not just a part, but all of it, the fullness. He desires us. He desires that we turn our lives over to him and say, Lord, I desire to follow your will. I desire to know you. I desire that even if it hurts, to follow you because you have given up everything to have me. I am yours, and I desire to give all that I am back to you. That is the hope and the witness of Christian life. That our lives are not our own, but they're his. They are on loan from him. He has given us this great life imbued with wisdom and knowledge to seek him out, to encounter his grace in the sacraments, to encounter his life in the church. So that when he does call us back home, when he calls us to that place of eternity, we will be fully able to offer him that which he already owns. Give to God what is God's. Give to the Lord what he desires the most. Give to the Lord the eternity that he has promised to us, that he might not be deprived of you, but instead to receive you fully to overshadow you with the grace that he has bestowed on us from that very moment of our baptism. Give to God what is God's. Please stand and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, things are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was again on the third day. He 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> On this World Mission Sunday, may God bless us as we send ourselves to the whole world in prayer, proclaiming the good news of Jesus to all the nations and all peoples. For the strength and endurance of the Pope, our bishops and priests, and all who are entrusted with church leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may the Lord grant them humility and courage in working for the good of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill or isolated, and for those who live in spiritual loneliness, that they may unite, unite their sufferings with the crucified Christ for the redemption of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in Israel and Gaza, we ask that you provide peace in this crisis and protect and comfort for all those who have been impacted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who provide ministry care to the homebound and for strength and healing for all those who are confined to their homes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek healing and wholeness, especially those who are listed in the bulletin and on the projection screen, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rest eternally in peace, especially those who are listed in the bulletin and on the projection screen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Killian Church, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our personal needs that we hold in our hearts, those in our book of remembrance, and for all the people for whom we promise to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you bless us with a gift of faith. Increase our faith as we answer our baptismal call to take part in the worldwide mission of Jesus. And we ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has redeemed the world. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good all souls. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize him as sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Killian and with all the saints on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, with Timothy and Ton as assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you and your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gift that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our trunk or treat is coming up on October 30th, and we need some trunks that are full of treats. So please contact our parish office if you would like to be one of the decorated car trunks and to give out candy to the kids. It could be as simple as having a couple of decorations, or it could be the most elaborate thing anyone has ever seen. Either way, the kids that do come would be greatly appreciated by your presence if you would also help with giving them candy. Even if you want to bring your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, anyone is welcome. We'll be having hot dogs as well as popcorn and, of course, all the candy to go around. We also ask that you complete the survey that we had done last weekend. And so the survey, we're asking that if you fill it out online on our parish website, if you're a part of our constant contact, this past Friday you would have gotten an email link that would have had a section where you could click on that link to be able to take you to that parish website or the parish survey page. And then also, if you don't have that, you can go right onto our parish website Click on the parish survey link. We want to hear from everybody. Honestly, we do. We want to know what you like. We want to know what needs improvement. We want to know where we can grow because it'll help us to be a better parish for you. Also, we are having a funeral mass for Bishop Todd Brown on Monday the 30th, and that starts at 10.30. 
partially because it is going to be an event at the diocese. We will be canceling our 9 a.m. mass here that Monday at St. Killian. We invite all of us, if we would like to go to the 9 a.m. Mass, join us for Bishop's Funeral Mass that will be at Christ Cathedral Monday, October 30th. I think it's at 10.30, but don't quote me on that time. If you show up around 10 o'clock, you'll be safe. Nine to get good parking. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.